So in our earlier video, while we were discussing about the GitHub Actions, we saw how we could able to actually create a simple workflow or something like this. But now we are going to extend this even further in a way that we could actually perform even more actions. For example, if I want to check out a code, I could do that as well. So as I told you before, in GitHub Actions, we have a lot of actions available in the marketplace and you can see over here on the right hand side there's a marketplace where you can find some of the commonly used operations or some of the operations which are available out of the box by the github actions itself for example if you're going to be doing a checkout operation or checkout action so you can just search for checkout something like this and you will see that there is going to be an action for that and most of the actions are already pre-built by the github or there are many community members who are also contributing to the GitHub actions like these. So you can actually use them as well if you wanted to, if you believe it is going to be legal. So I'm going to be using this checkout operation, uh, which is available on the marketplace. And then I'm going to be installing that. Installing is nothing but you can just copy these commands from here and then you can directly use it. That's it. That's the installation. You don't really have to do anything special like an extension where you need to add that within your GitHub actions account. It's just copying this command and start using it. So I'm just going to use this over here, but you will see that it is going to bring up a lot of details, something like this. Rather, you can actually just use some of the commands that is required for you to be executed. For example, for this particular operation, I'm going to give a name and you can give any name for that matter. So I can just give like checkout source code. So I'm going to say checkout source code. So you can give this name. You don't necessarily have to give the same name, but the users command over here is the one that you actually have to give exactly the same. That is the one that you're going to be using. And for doing that, you need to give double space and just use this uses keyword and then you need to call this actions this is the way that you tell us that you're going to be using a custom actions and then you're going to say check out at v2.4.0 so this is the version of the github action that you are going to be using and then you can see there is a another keyword which is nothing but with so i'm going to use this with and then you can see that it tells you that which repository that you are going to be checking out the code. So you need to exactly tell what you are going to be basically doing. Uh, so if you're going to be checking out the code with a specific command, like a f with a specific details, like the repository name with the owner, or you're going to be doing something like a, like a personal access token to be used to fetch the repository, all those things you can give over here. Like these are some additional properties that you can define or you can just leave it as it is. But you can also see that there is something that you can do. You can get the GitHub repository expression that you want to print as well. Well, so let's remove this width for now. I'm just going to give a run over here and I'm gonna say echo uh, this repo is, and then I'm gonna use this expression that I have just copied and I'm just gonna put a dot that's it. So it is going to be printing that particular operation for me. And you can see that the intelligence tells me that users cannot be used with runs. And of course you cannot use with the run because you need to use what is called as a hyphen of run, something like that. You cannot use within this particular users. So this is how you should be doing it. That's it. So now let's see what is going to basically happen. I'm going to commit this changes. I'm going to go to the actions and then I'm going to go to the update basic yaml file and you can see that there is a checkout source code operation is also taken place where it tells you that it is going to be getting the git version info which is going to be the current git version which we are using within the github actions and then it also tells that it is going to be checking out the code over here which is going to be the reference of remote of origin of the main and then it is also telling you like which repository that you are going to be checking out the code. So you see that the echo command says that this repository is exit automation slash GitHub actions course, which is nothing but this particular repository. So it has checked out the code for us guys. That's why it is printing it over here. So this is the way that you can actually check out the code. So this is one way of using an action within the GitHub. And if you want to go a level further, 
to do even further actions for example if i wanted to actually run a sh command or a shell scripting command from this steps we could do that as well so what i'm going to do is i'm going to first of all um, just click this edit and let's say if i want to run a inline script so i'm going to give a name for that and i'm going to say run mkdir of new folder so you can see that i'm actually going to be creating a new folder here and then i want to print whether this folder has been printed or not so in order to do that because i'm going to be using two lines or two commands to perform this operation i can use this pipe symbol over here which helps me tell that it's going to be a two liner so that i can just print another line for printing the command that i wanted to perform the operation which is going to be the ls hyphen l so i want to list all the files which has been uh, created at the same time which is already there on that particular context so this is going to be performing an command operation for me so you can see that this is a script file which i'm actually executing inside the github runner so i'm going to commit this changes and let's see how this operation is going to take place so if i go to the actions so you can see that in the run inline script what it's doing is it is actually creating a folder for us which is going to be the new folder and you can see that it has created a new folder for us and then this particular new folder is actually sitting inside this particular directory as well and you can see that it is just happening so you can see all the permissions that it has got like write permissions as well as the read permission and the delete permission so everything is actually there for the folder that we have created and this is an additional folder which is already sitting inside that particular runner so you could able to do a script execution right into that particular github runner and you can go a level further for example if you are going to be using a different operating system you can use different shell scripting as well for example if you are going to be using uh, powershell then you can use that as well uh, so you can define that over here like shell of sh is going to be for the shell scripting and you can use the powershell if you wanted to you can just specify pwsh for the powershell or you can use the bash command as well so if i use the bash and if i try committing the changes and if i go to the actions here you can see that the bash command has been executed because this is a linux machine and it works as expected but if i go and change the operating system from Ubuntu latest to Windows latest and if I try committing the change and let's see what is going to basically happen and looks like even for the Windows operating system it is actually running the particular bash file but you can see that they actually are running with the bash.exe which is sitting inside that particular operating system which is nothing but the Windows operating system because this particular Windows image actually has got bash.exe file sitting inside the microsoft windows server 2019 because we're using the latest windows latest image and that's why you can see that it is actually running the particular bash file which is great and let's go even a further to execute the same command from a shell scripting file rather actually running as a command over here so for doing that i'm actually going to go to this particular repository over here and i'm going to add a new file i'm going to call this as run.sh file and this run.sh file is going to hold the command that i just showed you which is going to be the mkdir of file from run.sh or run sh and then i'm going to say ls and then i'm going to say echo file created so this is the command that i'm going to be giving and i'm gonna commit this new file but this code is going to be executing now because once i do a commit you will see that the action is going to start triggering for us which is all right but we have not used this run command anywhere within our github workflows so i'm going to go to the basic.yaml file and i'm going to call that particular run.sh file and see if i could be able to execute that so for doing it i'm going to say name run a script 
file from repo and I'm gonna say run sh of dot slash run dot sh file so you can see that I'm actually specifying what is the command that I'm going to be executing like a shell scripting and then I can just specify probably PowerShell this time because we're running inside a Windows latest operating system and then I'm going to do a start commit and if I go all the way to the actions and to the update basic.yaml file and you will see that the code is being checked out at the same time it is running the inline script also it is running a script file from the repository where you can see that it is doing the file from run sh so it's creating a new folder and then it is also being listed so that's what it is doing actually so this is the listing operation which has happened over here the files from sh and there is a new folder so there are two folders that it is printing because in the first step we have created a new folder and then in this particular sh file we actually created a file from run sh folder so there are two folders being listed while we run this run.sh file and there is also a run.sh file which is sitting inside that particular step because as you can see over here in this step we don't really have the file from run sh folder but while it executes this particular step it has a new folder which is the file from run sh and the new folder plus the run.sh file so three files are being listed and the file is created is also being printed over here so this is how we could leverage the power of the run in the github action to perform all the operation and now that our workflow is even more clear and better and we could understand how all these magics are happening with the github actions in our next video we'll understand how we can make use of running multiple jobs with github actions